Okay, go ahead and say something, Brian. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I got you. All right, it's 7 o'clock. Let's go ahead and get started. Ryan, you there? Yes, sir. Okay, can you all hear Ryan okay? He's on the phone. He's not feeling well, so Ryan is calling it in today. <clears throat> okay, let's get started. This is the regular city council meeting, Monday, December 20th, 2021, the last meeting of this council, of this four-year term. Uh, would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Be seated. Brian, you may be seated. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, let's start off with a little housekeeping. We're going to move the agenda around a little bit. I'd like to make a motion to move item 5B up to item number 1. And uh, I need a second on that. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. That's four to one. Got that, Charlie? Four to one, right. Is that a yay? Can we move it up the agenda? Yeah. Fine. No. Yeah, okay. We'll talk about it now. Who, who, is, who abstained, Mayor? Who, who dissented vote? Go, God, thank you. Okay, I'd like to, now that it's there, I'd like to make a motion to table the second reading of an ordinance to annex TMS 654-00-00-026 and rezone from AGC in the county to PDD in the city as part of the 100% annexation petition. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Sorry, let's make aye. a comment first. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> so I understand why you all are here. I understand that no one wants more homes. I'm firmly in the no more homes camp too. In fact, I ran on smart growth. It's why literally all of us are sitting up here, including Ryan. However, knowing the whole picture, understanding all the factors, it doesn't make sense to pass this up. A vote to table is a vote to kill this project. We all know that. Residents don't want more homes. We don't either. However, what could happen isn't what we want either. And it's our responsibility to explain that, the why behind it. So let's say this gets tabled, which is likely what happens here in the next few minutes. A few possibilities can happen. Maybe Shea goes to the county. Maybe they rezone it RD2, which means two homes for every acre. That's 104 possible homes. Right now with us, we are sitting at a possible 138. Now we know, and so do they at this point, that 138 is highly unlikely with the buffers required and the topography in there. So 104 is more likely where they end up anyway. Maybe the county passes, like our new board has said they will. Although I'll hold out for that, given their current financials and what they have planned here in the next few years. However, what probably happens is that Shea most likely walks because, well, I don't know for sure, I'm assuming that their contract is based on the fact that annexation passes tonight. So that leaves a landowner two options. I spoke with him today. He can either sell to someone else or use it as its own currently, which is agriculture in the county. While agriculture use isn't what they want, it may be what they have to do based on the circumstances of their family situation. Want to know some of the options for that scenario? A commercial landfill, a turkey farm, neither of those are better than a $550,000 home. So maybe they sell to another developer. Let's say Ryan Holmes, who also actually bid on this as well and was higher than Shea. Okay, so let's say they sell to Ryan. Think they're gonna be the same quality as Shea or they're gonna put in a $550,000 home? They won't, they don't have that product. So then it comes to the new council because our vote was to table it. What do they do? What do they do? Because now they've had some time to get their feet wet. Now they know the ins and the outs of the budget and where we stand and how to plan for the future. Maybe then they realize that economic development isn't moving as fast as it should be and that they'll have to vote to raise taxes. It's coming, guys. You know, this is all hypothetical, of course. So what I do know is that the land will become res that, that land will become residential at some point. It will never be anything else except maybe agriculture in the short term. 
The reason I know that is because it's a donut hole. It's surrounded by other residential, and it's too far off of 160 and too far away from 77 for it to ever be anything else. No commercial developer will ever touch it. So if we pass, whether by tabling it or vo by voting it down, we lose out on $2.5 million in fees and around $250,000 in annual tax revenue, which could finish Catawba Park or make the necessary hires we need in certain departments or pay for needed equipment or fund the next capital project that there's currently no money for. We lose out on the connectivity, which I can tell you will be almost impossible for us to do at a later date. One, we won't have the money for it. And two, no other developer is going to agree to what Shea has agreed to. They just won't. So the one way to, we have connect that, to connect that part of the city is gone. The trail to the school is gone. Oh, and schools, let's talk about that. Based on the school calculation and the number of homes proposed, we would be potentially adding a total of 67 students to the district. That's all levels, elementary, middle, and high school. It's not a big number by any means. I've heard density is a concern. We have over 13,000 people in 3.2 square miles. If density was a concern, Tiga K wouldn't exist as we know it. We have stacked lots with three houses on them at the back of the peninsula. That ship sailed long ago, folks. Traffic is another thing I've heard. A traffic impact analysis will be done if this is passed through. And this is really funny to me. Um, the studies that everybody wants done and needs more time to review won't even happen without the, the approval of the annexation. Again, that's not how it works, but that's the theory floating around out there and the request in the five emails I received in the past hour. The widening of Dam Road and Gardendale will happen with or without the proposed development. However, with it, it makes it more essential and moves it further up the totem pole for consideration on the next pennies vote. It's easy to be against something, even more so when you fully don't understand it. It's much harder to know better and to stand up and say so. So when I make a decision, I don't do it lightly. I look at everything. I talk to as many people as possible and I read through everything I can get my hands on. I'm not making this decision because I don't have anything to lose and because this is my last meeting. I'm making it because it's the best thing for Tiga K. And that's all I've ever done. I would have voted for it if I was still here, planning to be here in January. So again, I get the feedback. I understand the concerns, but it's still the best decision. Go ahead. May I? <clears throat> um, first and foremost, what she said. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, we were, we were all elected um, to, to do what's best for the city, not necessarily what is most popular or what seems most popular, although the majority of people that reached out to me um, were in favor of this. Um, I'm going to reiterate what Heather said. Two and a half million dollars in construction and development fees. <clears throat> That's almost 20% of our annual budget that we get by doing nothing but approving um, this development. When we did the comp plan over and over and over, all we heard from the city was connectivity, connectivity, connectivity. The developer agreed to that connectivity to the tune of approximately a $600,000 uh, path to, to give us the connectivity that everybody's been asking for. That's $600,000 of their profit that they were willing to put into it because they were asked to. Um, that would give us the connectivity. The Shea Homes development was a high quality product. The property owner had opportunities to make more money selling the property to others, but he wanted his family's legacy to be a, a high end product over there, something that would fit in with the homes around it in Lake Ridge. Um, the lot sizes are about the same. So what do, what do we get now? Um, do we get a farm for somebody just to say they want to put a farm there for right now because we got to do something with the property? Or maybe just do it out of spite. Um, the property is going to be sold. It will be developed. Who's going to be the developer? What kind of product are they going to put right in the middle of our city? Um, and where's it going to be? Is it going to be in the county and we get nothing? Or is it going to be in the city of Tiga K? and we get something for it, because we're sure going to be sending our police and fire out there. So, you know, that's the reason why I voted for it, and I guess that's the reason tonight I'm going to vote not to table it. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of feel like we went back on our word, but I guess that's why there's two reads, and uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, those are my reasons. Any other comments? Sure, I'll make comments. Um, I know I've, I've spoken at length about this item before in the past, and um, so I'll just reiterate some of those points again. Um, <clears throat> uh, first of all, I, I think I said, I, I don't think that this, is, that this is a terrible development. I think it makes sense for the area. 
my concerns were on some of the specific details on that development. And like Heather and Gus have said, we're up here and I'm up here and I've committed to make the best decisions I can with the information that's presented to me. So if I have information that I still have questions about or that's inaccurate, um, then I want, I still want that information and that's the information that I need in order to make an informed decision. So when um, there's questions about the width of the pathway and the connectivity, yes, connectivity is a great thing and it is something that we've always wanted and you know, I've, like I said before, I applaud Shay um, and, and the work of city to ch the city staff to try to get that in that development and it's great, but if it goes to nowhere, if it connects to nothing, right, what good does it do? Why can't we take more time to take a look at this plan and work with Shay to figure out how, do, how can we get this path connected all the way, right, to the schools or figure out how do we get it connected to the park? And we can say all day long, oh, they won't do this, they won't do that, but in the end, this is the best city in the state of South Carolina and, and any developer would be privileged to be here and to develop in our city and I am proud of our city and there are some things that I am willing to um, negotiate on and there's some things that I'm not going to reduce my standards uh, for and, and I, it's, it's not a no to this developer, it's hey let's take our time, let's have more discussion, let's get more information and then we can make a decision. Planning Commission came up here, Planning Commission that this board put in place to evaluate these developments and make recommendations to us. They came up here and said, we need more information. We need more time counsel. And as the liaison to the Planning Commission, sitting through those conversations, you know, I, re I respect that. There's one thing when they make a decision and you know, it's our right to agree or disagree, but they're at a point where they're saying, hey, we need more information. This is moving too fast. This is a big deal for our city. Let's get the information we need and allow us to make the decision. There's still questions out there, okay? So I have respect for that, and I want to make a decision that's best for the city. And, and I feel like going through the thorough process, listening to the people who we put in those positions to help us make those decisions, along with city staff, um, and, and in addition to that, I'll say we've got our new city council members coming up and asking us for, for a chance as well to have a say in this. And I've, I've been in that seat before too, waiting to come up here and, and be able to have a say on things. And, and I understand what that feels like and I, I have respect for that. In the end, they're gonna be serving in the time where this, pr this project will be under construction and they'll have to deal with any of the decisions that are made for the, by this council. So if they're asking us for the courtesy, I, I have respect for that too. Um, so there, there are a lot of things at play here. I, I, I would love for Shay to continue to work with, with uh, the, the landowner to continue through this process, but if in the end it's, it's a date and, and that's the determination whether or not they wanna be a part of this great community, the best city, one of the best places to live in the country, well, then I'll take my chances and um, not, nothing changes for us come, come January. We're, we'll continue down this process, but if, if it changes for them, well, I, I'm sorry. I feel like they're, they're the ones to lose out. This is a great city. I love the city. Thank you. Ryan, Ryan, do you have anything? Otherwise, we're just going to go ahead and vote. For me, sorry. For me guys, it was a, I said for me, it was a simple moral obligation to the inbound council members and mayor that uh, they were man enough to, to step up and run for a spot to represent the citizens of the city, and so I think they should have a say-so in the direction that it goes. That's, that, that's the reason for my decision, guys. All right. Um, so all this talk about what's it going to be if we don't do it, that it's going to be, I don't know, apartments, or it's going to be all kinds of stuff. I have breakfast with Tom Audette and Christy Cox and Joe Hamilton of the county council and uh, mayor of... Uh, Fort Mill, Gwen Savage, and Christy Spears, we meet, we call it the North of the River Gang. We meet once a month for breakfast and we talk about things like this and who and how they're going to support us in, in, in either way. And so I hear, you know, it's going to be all kinds of weird stuff. Here's, here's an, a message I got from Tom Audet. Uh, he can't be here tonight because his county council meeting is also on Monday. I'll just hear him play it here. Hey, David, Tom Audet. I hope you're doing well today. 
Hey, I just want to let you know I'm going to be calling Chris Gray to let him know, make sure he knows that I will not support townhomes. I will not support apartments. Um, the only thing that I will support are one home on one acre of property. That's it. I will not support townhomes, and I will not support apartments. So I just want to make sure he knows that, and I'll be giving him a call. Hey, I hope you have a great day, and Merry Christmas. So that's, that's always the way it's been since the six years that I've been on council is um, the county council won't change the zoning if it touches TAK without our approval. So it's one, it's one unit per acre now. That's the way it's going to stay. Um, I also am voting to table this because I'm not saying it's a bad, it, it, it's a bad development. It's just we didn't have enough time to get any information. So county, I mean, our planning commission didn't even make a recommendation. And then when they, after we, voted on it the first time, it still is, is a live action. And city staff was told them, to don't, don't talk about it anymore. Don't, don't bring up anything else. And, which is, I thought, was kind of strange because <laughs> you guys don't work for the city. The city works for you. You guys run the committee, not the other way around. It's almost like they kidnapped the committee, you know, and uh, now you guys all got Helsinki syndrome or something, you know. That they're, you're the boss, not them. So we appointed you. They didn't appoint you, so if the, if, the, if the city council asks you for something, you should probably go ahead and get it for them. And if, and if somebody in the city says, no, you stop talking about that, that's baloney. You guys keep, keep up the good work, okay? Because we, we need the information to make a decision, and we don't have the information now. So it just seems like it's been rushed, 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 rushed. And why wasn't this before November election? Because it was going to be an election issue. We wanted to do it afterwards, so we get it. Okay, with that, I think I don't have anything else to say. We've got a motion. We got a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. It's tabled. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to listen to the citizens and not what everybody thinks is good for the city. Let me get back in my hair. All right, so with that, public comments. You're still, if you want to make public comments, that's fine. This thing's tabled till next year sometime. If you still want to come up here and, and talk about it, that's fine. I'll call your name if you just want to pass and wait till the next time, that's fine too. So let's start with, with uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm ahead of myself. Let's go to special presentation first. The Fort Mill Elks, Elks Beacon Grant, Chief Hasty. Mary Council, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Very close. So uh, I, I want to come to you and just recognize the Fort Mill Elks. Uh, they meet here in this facility. Uh, they do a lot of things in our community. They're very active with us. Um, we pitched an idea to them about a year and a half ago, right when COVID started to peak, uh, to do a smoke alarm blitz in one of our neighborhoods in our community. And the uh, the idea was pretty much tabled until probably about three months ago. And uh, we kicked off, and with the help of the, the Elks, uh, we did a smoke alarm blitz in the Catamaran area. We touched about 220 homes, and we hung smoke alarms in 49 of those. Uh, huge impact. And uh, due to a grant that they've given us of $1,000, we're going to continue that program in TGK. We continually hang smoke alarms in houses. Uh, we go on calls in houses, we evaluate them, and we want to make sure that our public is taken care of and is safe. So I want to recognize Sal. Sal's come tonight to, to join us. Uh, he represents the Elks, and I would just like to say thank you very much for your contribution and to keeping our community safe. It's our pleasure. Thank you very much. I just want to say it's our pleasure to uh, an appreciation that we can meet here every two weeks. Um, it's been great location for us um, and to be able to get more involved in the city of Tiga K. We are the Fort Mill Elks, but we encompass Fort Mill, Indian Land, and Tiga K. So um, we really appreciate the opportunity to help you guys. Um, and if anybody's interested in becoming an Elks member, we're always looking for new members. You can find us online at fortmillelks.org. Uh, we would love to have more people get involved. Uh, the more people we have involved, the more we can help in the community. So thank you very much, and we wish you guys a very Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holiday. 
Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Merry thank Christmas. You. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I've seen some great ra ways to exit a council meeting, but that one's the tops. It. Yes, that was. You could just said goodbye. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Next on uh, item B is TK Christmas tree decorating contest winners. Katie, come on up here. I'm not going for the last name. Katie B. <laughs> Katie B. Go ahead. Katie B. Go ahead. It works for me. Um, so the city held its first ever Christmas tree decorating contest at this year's annual tree lighting. Um, I'm excited to say we had four participants this year that decorated throughout the lower level Glennon Center um, for our annual tree lighting event. Uh, so tonight I wanted to announce our runner-up and first place winner for the contest. Um, our runner-up was Ruffalo Wealth Management. If they're here tonight. And our first place winner was Tiga Grays. I am speaking with the winners, so they'll be at City Hall to pick up their prizes. Thank you. Thank you to all the participants. All right, let's go to item B is recognition of the 2021 Department Head of the Year and Employees of the Year, Mr. Charlie Funderburg. Mary, yeah. So each year we, uh, we celebrate our employees uh, at, at a Christmas luncheon and we name our, uh, we do two employees of the year and one department head of the year. Um, one of our employees is out in the field, uh, field services type employee, and the other one's usually just an office employee. So our first one uh, from our utility department, Tony Cirelli, if you want to come on up. So Tony is a uh, is a meter tech with our uh, with our utility department, and um, the 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 our billing clerks in the office tell me that they know when Tony's not here. Uh, they miss his smiling smiling face, his great personality, and he's always lifting people up. So Tony, congratulations! We appreciate all you do, bud. Just hang tight right here. Yep. Our other employee of the month uh, is one of our newest employees. Um, employee of the year. Lauren Miller, come on up and join us. So we first hired Lauren to be our receptionist, and we thought that was all she was going to be doing for us. And um, in just under a year, she is now also our permit tech um, and helps out with business license and pretty much any of our needs uh, at the front desk uh, there at City Hall and is doing an amazing job for us. Lauren, thank you. Congratulations. Our uh, department head of the year wasn't able to be here tonight. Uh, our Mark Slocum department head of the year this year, and we did recognize her at our luncheon, was Ms. Susan Britt, our development services director. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Charlie. That was really nice, really special. Let's see. Now we'll go to public comments. Got a list of nine comments here. Um, you still... Come up and talk if you like, or you can table it, so to say, so to speak. First one is Scott Shirley. Well, given the light of what happened earlier tonight, I'm going to amend and shorten what I have to say. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, and uh, the audience members, I just want to say publicly thank you to this council for the hard work that you put in, for the hard decisions that you made, um, every one of you, you all did a great job 
and I can tell you as one of the incoming council members, you left our city better than you found it, and you're going to make the first several months of our job easy. So thank you. Thanks, Scott. Adam Graybick, do you want to speak? Your pass, punt, come back. All right, got it. Uh, David Borcham. I'm sorry? Burcham. Thank you. Would you state your name and your address yes, and clear David for Burcham, us? Burcham, 2488 Bergamot Street, Lake Ridge. And I had a question, or I, I, I guess I had a request um, that I hope that you and the new council, I guess, the new mayor and the new council, so I guess this is an outgoing request, but uh, I, I am not happy with the, the ballot labeling. Um, I'm 71 years old. I have never met a nonpartisan. And uh, I just don't feel that it's fair to the voters to, uh, for everybody to identify as a nonpartisan. I think you ought to be proud of who you are and you ought to be able to identify with, with what particular party or independent that you prefer. And uh, I just would like to see that change because I think that's within your power to do that. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, sir. Sean. Uh, Sean, state your whole name. I, I can't read this very well in your address. You still there, Ryan? Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. State your name and your address, please. Sean Ali Aziz, 7024 Chelsea Day Lane. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, based on the conversation I heard earlier, I think I will pass on a uh, real table it and I'll pick it up later. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Carl Nicholson. Carl, state your name and address, please. Carl Nicholson, 7074 Harbor Court. And I, too, would just like to pass by what I was going to talk about because of the vote and just like to thank the council and the mayor for all the service that they did for this city. You guys did a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Larry Harper, former councilman Larry Harper. Come on up. Larry, state your name and your address, please. Uh, Larry Harper, 25030 Riley Lane. Um, I, I'm at a loss here. I, I was here to, to try to tackle the objective that uh, you guys were presented with on delaying this vote on preliminary plat. Um, and due to my experience in the past, I was going to share some things with you that, or council, uh, that I thought might be relevant for consideration when you're doing preliminary plat approval. But rather than take up a lot of time here on council tonight, I know it's going to be another subject next month, so I'm going to forego any further comments until next time. Thank you there? Thank you. Thanks, Larry. We're having some technical difficulty up here. Let me try to get Ryan back on the phone. He dropped it. Are you there, Ryan? Yeah, sorry about that. I keep dropping. Okay, keep dropping. Are you traveling or something? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm going to put you back in. Mm Are you there now? Hello? You've reached the voicemail of Brian Lee Shores. <laughs> yeah, try, there it is right there. All right, let's go on to uh, Barbara Griffin. Barbara, please state your name and address. Barbara Griffin, 9098 Pickering Drive. I purchased my home in 1993 for $82,500, and they say that it's at least $200,000 now. Um, I originally was going to speak on uh, the Shea Homes deal, and I appreciate you guys um, tabling it for now. I was the one that said Heather doesn't have anything to lose, so I apologize for that, Heather, because I've heard a lot of good things about your work. Um, 
I did want to just say a couple of things, and I've already tried to do this within three minutes, and I know I'm going to be messed up. But anyway, one of the reasons why I was concerned about it was the rush, and I just wanted to state some dates that I found, and maybe this is not totally true, but we'll see. I saw that Shea Holmes' rezoning case was requested and on 1022, and that the commission took this up as new business on 11-1, which was only eight days. Um, and then even though it was on the long-term plan, I was just concerned that it was just going too fast because it, it was like only 15 days that they had to, to work on that. Um, I also wanted to say I rode around the area and I didn't see any uh, public notices of the annex. I mean, maybe that's there and I was just blind because I do not see some, some things sometimes. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, and I also wanted to say, um, at what point do, they pl do we plan for schools? Uh, I've seen it so many times where, um, the, and I've had, um, I've raised two children here and three grandchildren have used these schools as well that have lived at my home. Um, and I've seen where the, you know, kids weren't able to go to a specific school because there was no pre-planning for that. So I'm just really concerned about that. Lee, uh, Liz Duda said, on her Facebook that the school is advised on all requests for development and that would that would impact them and they don't um, they don't ever give an opinion well I think that's irresponsible and if that's the case um, and that's really all my main thing was I was going to point out that Alicia made a great uh, case for tabling it the first time and I had a big list just like you did <laughs> thank, you. thank you Barbara <laughs> my next is Chris Valovic, did I say that right, Chris? <clears throat> so first up, um, I'd Please like to- state oh, your name sorry. and your address. Chris Valovic, 3221 Alder Court. Thank you, sir. In uh, Lake Ridge. So first off, uh, same as what Scott Shirley said earlier, I'd like to thank the council member for the years of service that you guys have had. I know three of you guys are going out, or guys and girls are going out, um, and I think a few of you guys have helped the Lake Ridge community quite a bit. And you've also helped me personally as a board member in Lake Ridge. So I thank you guys for that. Um, there are still two uh, board members that will be returning. And also we have the other council members here. So I'm going to continue with my comments about uh, the Windell development. Um, I think Ms. Dash really hit it on the head. I don't understand why there's the rush. Um, so there is some concern where the contract may be terminated. Uh, that is an assumption. Um, I think you guys could make a, a good effort um, gesture to them. You could change the rezoning in, in the annex but continue and wait on approving the development and the plan. Um, I do not uh, think it's a good idea to have that number of tiny homes and that density. Um, I think Alicia kind of hit all of the, the topics on that. And I also agree with a lot of the comments that were made by the planning commission that was recommended. Um, so hopefully I'll be here at the other meetings and speak out as well, but maybe not. But uh, the returning members have heard it and also the um, other new council members, they know where I stand as well. So. Um, thanks for that. And then one other thing I want to mention, this is more for uh, Charlie Funderburg. Uh, so the Lake Ridge paved trails, uh, we need some uh, drainage done over there. We have, uh, when it rains, a lot of the water weeps out of the hills for uh, weeks afterwards. So especially in the summer when we have a lot of rain. Um, so the water sits on the trail and it gets slimy and slippery and some people have fallen. Uh, in the winter, um, like right now in the morning, uh, it gets icy. So we just need a little bit of uh, regrading, maybe put a crown in that or put some drainage dishes on the side where we can control that water a little bit more. And also we're starting to get a lot of cracks on the surface. It could be uh, use some cracked sealer on there so we can uh, hold off on having to do some s significant maintenance on that. That's it. Thanks, Thank you. Chris. Yep. Thank you. And then Liz Duda. Liz, name and address. Good afternoon, Liz Duda, 1081 Palmyra Drive. I, first of all, um, a couple of things. I was proud to run as nonpartisan in the elections. I would not have run if it were partisan. Thank you. Um, thank, and thank you, Ms. Griffin, for mentioning my um, Facebook page. I just want to say I was quoting an email from the city manager. That was not that was not my wording. That, that was used there. I also want to say I appreciate the, the work of city staff and congratulations. Um, as I've said in past city council meetings, a city the size of TKK needs sound policies and procedures that are followed. Also, city council and management must be accountable for their actions. 
appropriate governance standards and hiring practices are critical, particularly for leadership positions. Today I'm talking about the city's hiring practices, which can be improved to appear more consistent, unbiased, and equitable. I appreciate that when the police chief role opened, the city considered qualified internal and external candidates. Also, multiple jobs presently are posted to the TKK website. In contrast, earlier this year, the city eliminated the assistant city manager role. The woman in that position was reassigned to another role, and I believe that she has now quit. More recently, the deputy city manager role was created, similar to the assistant city manager role. This new role was not posted to the website, nor was there an internal application process for employees to express interest and be considered. Instead, the city manager promoted the parks and recreation manager into the role, a position that he formerly held. Looking at the city's two managers, one might perceive bias towards white males who have risen through the Parks and Recreation Department. Maybe the police chief or fire chief would have been interested in managing our city as the next step in their careers. Maybe the head of development, finance, HR, IT, operations, public information, or utilities, or even external con candidates would bring diverse experiences and perspectives. That bias or perception of bias seen through eliminating a role, then creating a new role, and filling it with someone with a similar background as the manager could have been minimized through an open recruitment process, including an interview panel. The City of TKK Employee Handbook states under the hiring heading on page 28, persons interested in applying for employment with the City of TKK must complete an official employment application form. The City does not accept applications for employment unless there is a posted and advertised opening. I recognize that the city manager has the right to promote from within. However, it would have been better to reduce the appearance of favoritism in this situation. Going forward, I encourage you to review the employee handbook to ensure that you have appropriate, documented procedures for the hiring process, applying best practices to reduce bias and increase diversity, and follow that practice. Um, in the 18 seconds I have remaining, thank you to the three outgoing council members, council member Dash, you always were extremely thoughtful in your analysis um, and the questions that you brought forth to the city council meetings. Council Member Overman, thank you very much. You were always responsive to citizen requests, always out there answering questions. Mayor O'Neill, I was always interested to hear what you had to say next based on the most recent language you used against me. I think maybe your idea of getting a wastewater treatment plant named after you seems appropriate. <laughs> very good. Can I get a second? It's, can we get a vote on that? I think it's unanimous. <laughs> Very good. I like that. All right, let's go to item four, committee report. Start with Economic Development Commission. Am I screwing this all up today? In a, I must be really trying to get out of here in a hurry. You're not retired yet, man. I'm a, <laughs> all right, Council, you've read the minutes. Are there any additions, changes? Seeing none, the minutes stand as published. Now let's go to item four, Economic Development Commission. Before I start that, Liz, that, that was priceless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, the EEC met on the 22nd. There was a quorum. Um, there, is, uh, there was discussion of another group that is very interested in the uh, Graceland, came off, whatever you want to call it, property <clears throat> off of uh, Stonecrest and Dam Road. Um, even to the point of discussing a uh, possible Optimus Hall type development. If you've ever seen that in Charlotte, it's pretty amazing. It'd be a great addition for us to have if, uh, if they buy it and if we can uh, push through everything else. Also, there's another group that's been looking at uh, the property on Gold Hill and Hubert Graham. The um, uh, discussion was made of the Christmas tree contest and also Holiday with Heroes. Um, also, and more importantly, um, changing the upfit fees to make them more competitive uh, when people come in and buy uh, properties such as the uh, Stonecrest Office Park um, uh, to make uh, our upfit fees more competitive with surrounding areas, uh, possibly rebating some of the tax fees to new businesses. Um, a subcommittee committee was formed to study what um, other communities do uh, so a plan could be presented to city council. Um, <clears throat> There was a Zoom call set up with retail strategies to focus on Graceland and Hubert Graham. Um, and then there was a public comment uh, where someone asked about a strategic plan and also if uh, the EDC leverages to the York County EDC, uh, small mu municipality versus big county. I would say on the retail strategy Zoom call, 
Um, a lot of discussion about 160, 160, 160. Um, well, we really don't have a lot of property along 160. Um, it's just not there. Um, and I think that the success of Model A and some of the other businesses in that area have proven that you don't have to have the, the trip counts, which is that's the buzzword that they always use um, to attract business and have a successful business. They don't have to be on 160. Um, Retail Strategies has been looking at national chains um, who always talk 160, 160, 160. Um, so they're going to pivot from looking at national chains to regional um, since we're looking at these smaller areas that are close to 160 but not on it. Uh, that was it. Thank you, Yes. Let's go to Planning Commission, Alicia. All right, Planning Commission, the hardest commission, working commission there is. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Um, okay, so at our last uh, planning commission meeting, um, we met the first Monday of the month, and um, commissioner activities over this past month, just want to say um, that our commissioners do attend continuing education classes, just like I believe economic development does too, and there was a class held jointly with Fort Mill um, on Tuesday, the end of the month of November. Um, the topic was economic development activities, so um, very um, important with York County Economic Development Office leading that session. So huge thanks to them for helping uh, in educating our, our uh, commission members. And then there will be a part two of that series that will be coming up here in the near future. Uh, on the regular meeting calendar, uh, they discussed their meeting schedule for 2022. For the most part, they will still continue to meet the first Monday of every month right here in this room at 6.30, so feel free to put that on your calendars. But note, there are uh, a couple exceptions. The January meeting, they'll be meeting on the 10th. Um, the July meeting, they'll be meeting on the 11th. And September, they'll be meeting on the 12th. So uh, if you are interested in, in following along, I uh, encourage you to come first Monday um, at 6.30. They also reviewed a draft ordinance that would establish a process for community outreach. This is something that I've mentioned um, over the past couple of council meetings. They're going to continue to work through that and um, hopefully have a recommendation that they can bring forth to the uh, new council members here shortly. But as we know, hearing from the public is very important, um, especially as early and often as possible uh, when it comes to development or redevelopment. So um, I'm really excited to see what the Planning Commission brings forward, and I'm looking forward to um, and hopeful that City Council will support that um, those efforts moving forward. Uh, they also briefly reviewed their progress um, on considering an ordinance on auxiliary dwelling units in the city. Uh, they just mentioned that progress has been slow just because there have been priority, or excuse me, uh, competing priorities. Uh, recently, but they're going to do some additional work um, between now and their next meeting. So hopefully they'll be making some progress here and um, be able to gain consensus on several points that they're uh, considering. And then let's see, they discussed the development of work plan for calendar year 2022, which of course, as it makes sense, they are going to wait uh, to finalize that for the new council members to come on board so they can ensure that um, their priorities are in line with theirs. Uh, let's see. Um, some new tasks that they, they did have discussion on. Uh, they do want to begin discussions on making recommendations to council that will perhaps improve the PDD development and public hearing process in the future. Um, they're going to work uh, begin work on that offline this month, and that will carry into their regular meeting in January. And then, yep, their next uh, meeting will be January 10th. Yep. 10th here again, 6.30. And um, before I end, just r congratulations to Susan Britt, who is our staff liaison to the Planning Commission for being the Employee of the Year. And um, thanks again to all the Planning Commission members. You guys worked so hard. Um, you guys put a lot of effort in, not just one time a month, but uh, throughout the month, attending additional meetings, uh, researching, debating topics. And I really appreciate the great work that you do. And thank you uh, to our chairman. Uh, Chris Leonard sitting out there. Uh, he's done a great job leading the Planning Commission, so thank you for your service. And I'll point out Kathy Masters as well, because I know she's put in a lot of work, and, um, and Liz for, for always coming and providing some public input too. So thanks to everyone. I'm done. All right. Thank you. Let's go. TK Forever Foundation. 
Okay, so Tiga K Forever met last Monday, December 13th. Um, unfortunately, they had to make the tough decision to cancel the Taste of York County event. Um, there just aren't, our area restaurants just don't have the staff or the food donations to accommodate an event like that um, at this point in time. Hopefully we can bring that back at some point in the future. Um, in place of that event, um, they're going to host their first stand-up comedy event March 11th. Uh, there'll be three comics and an auction um, with some great items to bid on. Tickets will be $20 each and all proceeds will benefit Catawba Park. That'll be um, upstairs again on the 11th. Um, there's also going to be a Gatsby style gala held at right up here as well. Um, that's coming up really quickly, January 8th. Tickets are on sale now uh, via Eventbrite and are also $20. Um, there's gonna be live music, cash bar, um, and you can visit the city Facebook page for more information. And that's it, that's all I got. Thank you, Heather. All right, let's move on to item five, unfinished business. This is a second reading of an amendment to Ordinance 50 Land Development Code. Recommendations regarding potential amendments to stormwater regulations and the subdivision and land development code were presented to Council in September. As a result of discussion at that meeting, staff is proposing amendments to the subdivision and land development code, Section 1202.2, to include riparian buffer requirements and to amend Section 1306 regarding open space requirements. Any comments? I'll consider a motion. Uh, so um, my only comment is just um, clarification to make sure that on the, let's see, uh, the land requirement to be dedicated, um, the, the computation that that formula is based on, making sure that the business is left, uh, percentage of gross acreage is left at 25% and not changed that to 20%. That is correct. Okay. With that confirmation, um, I, I can make a motion. Yep. Uh, Mayor and members of council. Just one moment. I'd like to make a motion to approve the second reading of an ordinance to amend Ordinance 50, Subdivision and Land Development Code Sections 1202.2 and 1306. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Let's go to 5C, unfinished business, which is a bid award for the pool management contract for the Beach and Swim Center. During the budget process, council approved the Beach and Swim Center budget to include pool management services. Staff put the project out for bid and, a direction, and the direction of council rebid. The pool management services and all responsive bidders were interviewed. Any comments? Can make a quick comment. Um, so Joey and I, thank you Joey for inviting me, interviewed three pool management companies on December 8th. Um, all three of them bid on next year's pool contract and were all very close in pricing. <clears throat> they included Carolina Pool Management Company, Aquatech, and Trident, who has held the contract for the past eight years. Um, while all were great and offered different things, I would like to personally recommend to the rest of council that Aquatech get the contract for the pool. What I liked about them specifically is that they had an entire division dedicated to attendant-only pools, which is what we are moving to for next summer. Excuse me. <clears throat> Um, they have a standard operating procedure and a training program specifically designed for attendants versus lifeguards. They also have swim instruction program that they run and we could be able to offer that again to our members. Um, finally, I also talked to two other pools who currently have Aquatech as their management company. Both used to have Trident and one of those pools is Baxter. Um, and they said that they've had outstanding service with Aquatech and are incredibly pleased with them. Um, so I'm thankful to the service from Trident over the past eight years. And what I can say is that whenever an issue did arise, um, they were quick to respond and to develop a solution. But at this point in time, I think Aquatech will be our best bet. You'd like to make a motion? Sure. Mr. Mayor, members of council, motion to award the bid for pool management contract for the Beach and Swim Center to Aquatech in the amount not to exceed $48,000 and authorize the city manager to execute the contract. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Let's go to six. Six A. This is a bid award for renovations at the Beach and Swim Center. In 2021, the city received ARP funding with a portion allocated to the Beach and Swim Center for lost revenue. These funds will be used to renovate the existing concession stand, restrooms, and the interior of the facility. Staff put the project out for bid in accordance with the purchasing ordinance and com complete solutions contracting located in Irma was the lowest qualified and responsive bidder. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll, and 
entertain a motion? Mr. Mayor and members of council, I'd like to make a motion to award the bid for the bid for bid award for renovations at the Beach and Swim Center to complete solutions contracting in an amount not to exceed sixty-three thousand dollars and authorize the city manager to execute the contract. I have a motion. I'll second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, it's unanimous again. All right, that's it. Let's go to Charlie Funderburk with the city manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, I'll be brief this evening. Uh, first and foremost, um, would like to welcome and uh, introduce Casey McGlumphy as our new deputy municipal clerk. Uh, she's hit the ground running over the past two weeks, doing an excellent job for us. Um, you know, welcome her to, uh, to our team. Um, our holiday closings um, coming up uh, starting the end of this week. Uh, noon on Friday, we'll reopen on Wednesday the 29th. We're also closed on Friday, December 31st for New Year's. Uh, got a little weird this year with the holidays landing on weekends. So, um, huge thank you to all of Santa's elves and city staff who assisted with the 225 letters this year. Uh, and a big thank you to the fire department for safely transporting Santa around the city this past Saturday. Always good things. If you made it past the parks and rec parking lot today while the sun was still up, um, you've noticed that we've started with that parking lot project. We're tying that parking lot into the city hall lot um, and paving those um, a little bit safer access egress using the stoplight than coming out there at, uh, at that uh, former driveway. So that work is going on. Uh, hope to get that wrapped up pretty soon. Uh, Duke Energy subcontractor is working diligently on that power grid project. Um, that's the mess that you see as you drive past the Memorial Gardens. Um, their schedule has them being finished around the Memorial Gardens by the time the kids return to school, and they'll be do uh, they will be doing the work on the trail um, the week the kids go back. Uh, so they're planning on right now January 3rd, and it looks like they'll have at least two, if not three, crews working on the trail process to try to get that done uh, and get those lines underground. Once they finish that, then they are scheduled to move up to the marina and um, Catamaran, Chelsea Day area to put those overhead lines uh, underground. So um, that work is continuing on, but parents, please plan accordingly. Uh, when your kids go back to school, you're probably not gonna be able to use the trail until sometime in February, so um, that end of the trail. So from Trail Ridge back up this way, you're fine. From Trail Ridge to Trailhead Park, that section of trail is gonna be closed for a little bit. Um, Let's see, last uh, January 3rd, um, this council will get together for one last time at 7 p.m. Um, so the new council members and mayor can be sworn in. Um, looking forward to welcoming our new folks uh, joining the team. And uh, I'll reserve the rest of the comments uh, for item number nine, mayor, and last but certainly not least, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you, Charlie. All right, let's move on to any questions for Charlie before we move on. All right, let's go on to Item nine. Oh, recognition of the service for mayors and nope. council comments. Council comments. <laughs> council comments. We'll start with uh, Alicia. Uh, is this where we make our comments? No. Comments? No. Okay. This is just regular council comments. Okay, regular council comments. Okay. Uh, a second. Um, a huge thank you to the fire department, uh, fire chief, and Santa. It was awesome to see you uh, riding around town. I know it takes a lot of work and effort to do that and I know my kids sitting back there well they were sitting back there I don't know where they Party are anymore um, yeah they're still there uh, we're super excited and that's probably one of the best things um, or at least one of my favorite things about Tiga K is watching that happen and um, just seeing everyone in the house is run out and get super excited and everyone getting all happy on Facebook and um, so again thank you for that um, uh, big thanks for Duke Energy and their investment in our city uh, I know that not, not everyone gets all their lines, not every city gets their lines undergrounded. Uh, it's a big project, it's very expensive, it, it's time consuming, and, um, and we're, we're very fortunate um, to have, uh, have them do that for us. So, so big thanks to them. And um, Merry Christmas to everyone, and I hope you have a great new year. It's been, it's been great. Ryan, do you have any comments? No, oh, just a big thank you to you, Dave, Alicia, Heather, for your service and all you did for the city. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Thank you, sir. Heather? No, no Just comments. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Gus? <laughs> Thanks, hey, re That's real brief, time. same thing. Um, really, thank you, thank you, thank you to Chief and the Fire Department. Um, 
it's always been one of the biggest parts of Christmas around here, and, and the bigger the city gets, it doesn't matter. Y'all still manage to, to touch everybody's home with Santa Claus on the fire truck. That's just <clears throat> an amazing feat. It gets more every year, and, and it's amazing that you guys can do it. Thank you. Um, Merry Christmas to all. Be careful. Um, they got Ubers out there if you uh, don't need to be driving, okay? Um, that's it for now. Thank you, and I'll just comment too, since I'm always last, every, what everybody else says, Chief, appreciate the firemen and the, that running around every year. That's awesome, what you all do for Christmas. Just Merry Christmas, everybody, and uh, y'all have a ha happy, safe New Year. Now we'll go to item number eight, which is the recognition nine, which is recognition of service for mayor and council members. And we'll start with, let's start with, we'll start, you're going to handle it? Okay. And let your family come okay. up. I saw, sure. saw them. Come on up. Come on up. Um, folks, council puts in a ton of hours, more so than just the, the hour or two that you may see them on the third Monday of the month. Lots of discussions, lots of emails, lots of phone calls, uh, working hard, working super, super hard. Um, I think this is one of the first times I've seen where we've had uh, three going out all, all at one time uh, with a lot of knowledge and a lot of hours. Uh, we can't thank you enough. So just a small token, a uh, small token on, uh, on behalf of the city. Just flowers and our updated seal, and then we've got a nice, uh, nice vase for you. I feel like it's a briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> you get that out. There we go. Let's, uh, here, I've got the box. You take the vase. There we go. Just read it out for everybody if you wouldn't. We did unwrap these. <laughs> Not sure who wrapped them back, but <laughs> we made sure they were safe. We're making sure they were safe. There you go. Oh boy! Thank you very much. Um, so I'll just say thank you very much for um, this opportunity to to serve the city. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that public service is very near and dear to my heart and um, I put everything in it and um, I really care a lot about this uh, the city. I really care a lot about public service. I really care about uh, the council manager form of government and um, how it's a, it's a great way to manage a city. And I know that I'm looking out here and I see so many of you who have had influence or who have had um, just a part of supporting me throughout this process or providing me with input and feedback and um, telling me when they disagree with me. <laughs> um, and, and really that's what makes this, this role special is, um, is hearing from you all and making sure that we're up here representing you uh, the best way we can in, in making smart decisions, um, doing the research, putting in the time, um, really thinking through the decisions that we make. And so I'm super grateful for all of you, but, um, and this council too. So I know you all be, are behind me, but um, Heather, man, thank you so much. You've been so awesome. I, um, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have you as a friend up here and just all the times that we've spent together debating things and, and try to hash things out and, hey, what are we going to do? How are we going to get this budget tackled? And so... Um, <laughs> so I appreciate that so much, and thank you, Gus. You've always been so thoughtful, and and um, I'll always appreciate your genuineness and in, in the way you, that you approach this position. And Mayor, man, I can't wait to put something in that wastewater uh, <laughs> sewer, sewer Daily, system that's going to be named after you, no. <laughs> David. Seriously, thank you so much for all your leadership on this council. Um, you know, you've been a, a, a great leader for us, and you've really um, you've been, you've meant a lot. So thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate all the work that you've done. And I know you've put in a lot because you remind us every time we meet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but lastly, I, I want to, uh, and most, most importantly, I want to say thank you to my family. And, um, if it weren't for them, especially Bob, my husband here and, and my mom, uh, too, who's here for, uh, watching the kids. I mean, Lillian was what, like, Seven seven months when uh, when I started running for city council. So uh, this has been pretty much all that she knows is mommy going away at night for meetings, and um, I know that's been hard on her and and you and um, and Robert, of course, back here, uh, being a seven year old boy <laughs> at his finest. But um, I love you and thank you for all your support, and um, 
I wouldn't have been able to do it if it weren't for you. So thank you. Miss Heather, if you want to join us down here. Danny, come on up, bud. Again, Heather, thank you so much for your, your time and commitment. Um, I'm not sure uh, who I'm going to talk to on the phone these days, but it'll be okay. It'll be okay. We're still around. Definitely don't be a stranger. Um, as already has been, uh, been recognized by Ms. Dash, put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, um, and we can't thank you enough. Um, I think somebody just, just said uh, recently, you know, y'all have, uh, have left the city in a better spot than what you found it. Um, y'all have worked tirelessly, and thank you very much. Well, thank you. Um, somebody much smarter than me and way more influential than me recently said, you don't run for office because you want the office. You run for office because you want to do the work. And that's what this is, right? You put in the work. It's not one and a half hours once a month sitting up here. It's the other 29 days of the month that things actually get done in this city. Um, you know, the, the staff here is incredible. So I want to thank all of you guys for showing up every day and giving it your all. Um, I've never seen a staff that does, and I've said this before, that does more with less. You really somehow make magic happen. Um, and I'm, I'm really grateful. Charlie, um, I know I've said this to you privately, but publicly I'm going to say it too. Um, you know, you went through a situation and it was tough. And you could have either gotten bitter or you could get better and you've gotten better and it just speaks to your leadership for the city um your character and you know i'm gonna definitely miss you yeah um hold on hold on jeez give me my moment okay um i want to talk to these folks up here for a second alicia ditto to what you said um i mean we burned burned some candles here late into the night going over every detail of the budget um, thanks for making me think of all the things that I didn't think of. Um, thanks for, you know, pushing me. Um, to Gus, thank you for being just a great friend. I mean, you and I have, you know, gone toe to toe at times, but we've also, you know, seen eye to eye on so many things. And I'm just grateful for your friendship and grateful, you know, for your guidance on so many things. Um, Ryan, I, I don't even know if you can hear me, but, um, you know, it, you, you didn't say much, right? Like, Ryan doesn't say much, but when he talks, you, you definitely want to listen. So I definitely respect you, respect your opinion, and everything you have to, to offer. Um, and David, thank you again for your leadership. You know, thanks for letting us be who we are up here. Um, you know, we are all of our individual selves, and those personalities definitely came through from time to time, but I appreciate you letting us be that. Um, and thank you to these folks right here, um, my kids, my husband, for being my sounding board, right? So, you know, for telling me I'm, I'm, don't, I'm overreacting or, you know, I need to think that through and calm down, Heather, it's gonna be okay. Um, so I'm appreciative of your, you know, guidance as well. And thanks to my kiddos. And thanks for coming, guys. It's your first one ever, right? First and last. So, um, and thank you to all of the residents. I met so many of you. Um, it, it's been an amazing journey. And, you know, I, I wish everybody the best. TUK is going to be awesome. And it only goes up from here. So thank you. Joseph's so going to do pictures real quick. Okay. All right, Mayor, your turn. Miss <laughs> Linda, I saw you in the back. Come on up. So, as as with the rest, it's a lot of. Uh, a lot of hours, especially especially with the mayor. 
uh, whether it be RFATS meetings or COG meetings or meetings with uh, our elected county folks or state folks, uh, you, you definitely put in a lot, a lot of time, a lot of hours, and we are thankful for your service. Um, I do hope that the congressman does let you retire, <laughs> as you plan. But uh, the city is much better than what we were, uh, and we can't thank you enough for your guidance and your leadership, as has been said by the others. And as a small token of our appreciation, we've got a lot. Most of our staff members have, have signed the mat. Hopefully, there's somewhere in the in the house or the office you can. You can hang that. <laughs> but uh, we really do appreciate everything, and um, we wish you nothing, nothing but the best. Um, I hear Miss Linda's got a lot of trips planned for you. <laughs> well, it's been a, I can't believe it's been six years already. Ryan and I, well, almost to the day, started this, and uh, didn't know what to expect. I've said a couple of times, and people didn't understand when I said it, this is the easiest job I've ever had because the staff makes it so easy for us. They really do all the work. People always say, we did this, we did that. We don't. I mean, Charlie is the engine. He's the carburetor that just makes the whole thing run. You know, we got Bob, Joey. We met at the, uh, the library, I guess, four years ago and talked about what we wanted to accomplish in the next four years. And we said, get ready, Joey. Here it comes because we wanted Parks and Rec. And look at what happened. Just kind of that uh, all play together kind of fell in our lap and all of us, everybody worked so hard at it, everybody did. To say one person did something is really, you can't say that. Um, and then we got the money for, we just discussed for Windjammer Park. We were in Columbia and Senator Clymer came up to us and said, you guys want $100,000? And we said, sure. So we got, ended up getting $125,000, $130,000. We fixed up Windjammer Park, we've also picked up Rundy, the, the restrooms, and Pit Karen, we did an upgrade. And then, of course, the, the cherry on, on the top was uh, to do Catawba Park. And that's going to be amazing. We've been talking about that for 15, 20 years. It's been forever. And uh, I can't believe we actually, we're actually going to achieve that. That's really the, the crowning touch for everything. I want to thank all my chiefs. I see um, wastewater fill back there. Keep up the sludge. <laughs> Chief, both my chiefs, Chief Parker, our Chief Parker's not here, Chief Glenn, and then Chief Joey, um, two of the best chiefs we could possibly have. We got the best fire department and the best, best police department. You know, there's a reason that we're the safest, you know, city in, in South Carolina. Our and we want to keep it that way. We want to defend the police, not defund them. We defend them. And I'm thankful for my trophy wife here. She's always been there. Helping me out whenever I come home sometimes. <laughs> you know, we really do. I know we really do. We get along pretty well. Everybody does. And sometimes I just go home. It's been a, it's been a long day. And she's always there to support me with a good, good slice of meatloaf or something. <laughs> Great cook lately. So appreciate, appreciate your support and the support of the kids. And what are we going to do now? Yeah, I want to say, say thank you to this city council because I've been involved with all of you. And this is, uh, city, city of TKK, you're so lucky to have each and every person up here. I know how much work they put in. I know the sacrifices the families make. The husbands, the wives, Charlie, his wife. I, I mean, it, it is, I won't say it's thankless, but it's not thankless. It is the most rewarding thing you can possibly do. And you have just been blessed with an amazing council. And I thank you all. Yeah, I want to thank all my council, uh, Heather and Gus and Ryan, if he's still there, and Alicia and their families for doing this. I just, just one real fast story. I'm going to turn this over to a great guy, Chris Gray, and he's going to get the calls from people who say they they got their sonic order messed up, for real, or the, the chicken wasn't extra crispy, for real. So I can't wait to hear some of your stories of the people who call you with some of the things they complain on. The Sunoco, get to know that Sunoco up on 160. It's not in TKK, but somebody likes to call every couple of months and say, what's going on with Sunoco? I don't know. It's not in TKK. And they just get all upset about that. So just get ready. Thanks, Charlie, Bob, all the chiefs. Joey, you got your work cut up for you, buddy. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to leave that right here. Yeah. Joe's just going to take a picture of you and Linda real quick.
Ryan, you still there? Yes, sir. Thanks, I buddy. Am. I appreciate Thanks, the last six years hey, with you, too. Do we, do we get a turn? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want a turn? Yeah, just, you know I'm shy. I'm, work, I'm working on my ability to speak in public without getting shy. Um, Alicia, um, thank you for all you've done. You know, you, you never met a question that you didn't like. <laughs> but you kept us on our toes. Okay? You made us think. You made us think. It was, it's been an honor to serve with you. Okay? Um, you know, they say that uh, James Brown was the hardest working man in show business. Um, Heather was the uh, hardest working council person we had up here. Um, no doubt she put in the time, she put in the effort. Um, I, I, I made a new friend. I would have never believed that um, <clears throat> one person that was way over here and another person that was way over here, y'all can figure that one out on your own, would agree 99% of the time. But I think it's because we always, you know, <clears throat> we're trying to do what's right for the city of TKK. And that's why we all ran, and, and that's what we're up here for in the first place. But um, thank you, Heather, very much. Um, everybody needs to go home and spend some more time with their families. Um, David, the mayor with no filter. <laughs> I mean, never had a filter. But uh, six years you gave to the city. Um, I think, uh, I mean, you planned everything around it. I think up until that little kidney stone jumped on you last year, you never missed a single meeting. Um, you're always here in person. You went to all the RFATS meetings and all the other meetings that you went. Chris, you got, your, you got some big shoes to fill, um, but I have no doubt you can. David, thank you. It's been an honor to serve with you as well. Um, you know, one thing I, I want to say is, is in, in my four years, um, I mean, almost every vote has been 5-0. There's been the occasional 4-1, and then right here at the very end, we had a 3-2 that flipped to a 2-3. But I... I it's amazing that five people could get up here and almost every single time be 5-0, agreeing what we thought was best for the city. So um, <clears throat> here again, an honor to serve with, with, with all three of you. Um, look forward to serving with you, Chris, Scott, Tom, Ryan, continuing to serve with you for another two years. Um, and uh, anyway, that's all I got. And last chance if you want to say anything. Thing. Yeah, thanks for your service to this great city, guys, all three of you. It's been an honor serving with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. No. Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>